okay, if I put the USB dongle in the right system, um, I can have my headset working. <laughs> Isn't that kind of amazing? Um, so we're finally live. Um, and we should have audio now. At least I have my audio level going. I've got also the cooler running, uh, even though my headset is noise canceling, um, I still hear a little bit of that noise. I don't think, I think you guys hear less than I do. So the, the thing for this stream, and again, that was technical difficulties that, uh, that stopped uh, the stream from starting up, uh, correctly and uh, but the what we're commemorating is we just went over 10,000 members on the vintage IBM mainframe and mini computer group on Facebook and I need to get a link to that group uh, okay. like I say I had to switch systems midstream here. I'm going to think I'm going to, well, let's, let's have one of Chrome windows there. And I, I had to use an, my older system because again, my, my clear click wasn't recognized on the newer system. I like how it fires up real quick and everything, my new system. Um, but um, so I, I abruptly switched to the other system. At least I had that on for a while, but going through and bringing up browser windows and everything else it doesn't have an SSD. So it goes through and gives trouble. Okay. So here's the link to the group on Facebook. And... So hopefully we can get some members. I did advertise it there on the group so we can see if we get any uh, joins from the group. I, I would have gone through if I if I could have simulcast the um, uh, it at the same time on Facebook, I would have. And as long as everything works uh, correctly, we're going to have an interesting discussion on on um, on Facebook um, about Facebook tomorrow because um, uh, we've got more scammers on the vintage computer groups. I'm getting tired of it. I, I'm getting tired of just having to react to these people that um, try and scam out of money, uh, go crazy, or just even influence other people um, to go through. And the irony is, is the recent transactions I've had on Facebook, and I think it's a lot of projection that they call me a scammer. They end up uh, projecting, well, I think you're trying to scam me, and it, you try and tell them, that, how does that even work? It, it, it just can't, there's no possibility of it working the way that they think it works. Um, but let's go through and continue on. And what I was even hoping for this is I do have the cooler on. I've got my AS400, my 9406-170 uh, off. I've had it off since the spring. Um... And uh, it, it, irony is, I, I go through and I work with the one at work. We have a Power 720 still in service and line printers uh, that are still functioning. Um, by the way, I, I, um, I'm sorry for um, any European viewers. I'm sorry that this is so late. Um, in the, in the day for you, effectively after midnight at this point. Um, and uh, when I say Europe, I also mean you, 
well, I shouldn't say I mean the UK as well. I'm saying Europe and UK people that are trying to turn in, uh, tune in. I, I'm not going to group you guys together anymore. I think that that, um, uh, that was uh, a, a thing that uh, UK, I don't know, is, I don't know whether they're, but, well, I, I'm stammering along here and I'm going to say something that is probably going to go through and offend someone. So I, I best just stop. I'll just say, I'm sorry to the UK and European members um, that this is just so late um, in the day for you. Uh, but I'm, I'm hoping to go through and even start up my S400. It may be cool enough, or at least I can go through a startup procedure. Um, it's been a while. In fact, I, um, even at a point months ago, I came into the space and there was a very acritic smell like electronics. And I hope it, I don't think it was anything to the S400 to the main unit. I don't know what it was though. So let me, let me get off the internal webcam, get flipped around. And we'll see if we can get that started up uh, so we can go someplace with the stream. And I'll pull out my. The other thing I'm going to do is um, UPS operates here full time. I'm UPS down by the side of the S project. And it's just out of view, right below here. I have a serial port switch. I, I need to get it set for the pipe access side. Um, I've even found the, the Windows 3.1 uh, client access diskette that I had, but I guess that's even the uh, and, and this is a yeah, the client access express for Windows. It's easy set up for either on that CD. And this is for the later version of the Windows. I think, I think this is for like the 95 and Windows NT client access. And um, of course, for client access, we use that in a modern uh, environment it works of, or even from Windows 10 system. But this is the cable that interlinks between the UPS, the APC UPS that I have, and the AS400. And it's, it's really funny because I uh, looked for the APC cable, I even had a part number, never was able to find it, and um, the, um, the trip light listing that I had on my watch list on Amazon, had a single cable suddenly appear and stop. And so I grabbed it up. It wasn't even bad. It was like $10 USD. And um, amazingly, there's two cables that are here in the uh, box. And they're both, uh, this particular cable, and I need to still pull out the voltage. I have the voltage in here. Go through, and um, that's uh, something for this uh, video as well. Is that um, these are keyed on one side for the AS400 in three is missing that center pin. So it's two, two, and four on the bottom. So I think I, I have two cables that are the same, uh, but there's a routine that you go through on this, and really it doesn't give you the battery status of the UPS or anything like that, but if you have a power failure, then you can go through on your AS400 and uh, set up the power down sequence. So we'll go through and shut down the AS400 as gracefully as possible. Um, so I need to get that going. 
Let's let's leave that out of the Just in case we have time here to go through that. Um, I don't want the Ethernet switch. I did have the Ethernet switch on top of there. I get, need to get the TCP IP working on that on my S400 at some point. Um, I need to get out setting up your ID4 zero and in my case six and be at the X of six mode, what does that mean? And I'm just to the setup screen right now uh, for the terminal. I have the terminal open face. I have it turned around just to get PGA uh, connection to it. I could go through and um, possibly get, if we get the system going, I could even uh, connect up the uh, BGA to the output. And these are little pizza box. 34, this is actually the 3489 terminal. And it actually has an 286 CPU in here, believe it or not. And so the And this has both the 122 key. I mean, you can use a 101 key keyboard as well. But this has the mouse input as well. We have our, our square cursor for mouse on the screen. And then, um, but this is a, there's a 286 CPU in here. There. And the parallel port. On the back, if you connect up one of the parallel part to both clip readers, it actually gives post-clip. They boot up. And they're really interesting uh, terminals. And the 3488 and 3489 are very unique in that aspect, that they do that. And those are both the, the, the 3488 has a B20 CPU in it. And um, so it's really interesting how they have kind of that PC side as well. And switch a bit to the right page. I'm looking at the whole timing for your system. There's all the connections I have on the back. And then it's very helpful manual. It's just amazing IBM manual just going through and stepping through. Uh, talks about the client access here. Here's the Hydra. I've done a video of the Hydra of the pinouts for that uh, on my channel. Here's the uh, pinout for the serial cable for the client access. Oh, even modem settings. Okay, so not the pin out the kernel port. The, um, okay, so I'm going to back to you. And I don't have the expansion in it. That'd be nice to have. Um, I'll talk about the cable connects. Okay, we're getting up here to the control panel. Here's how to do on the. Oh, and look at that. For the uh, Windows 3.1 client access, talk about some entries you can make in the Radio 6 Enhanced section of the System I9 file. Isn't that cool? Okay, here's the startup sequence. Okay, and we have a, 
Now we don't have a local controlling system, but we'll go through the boot sequence the same way. Maybe pull up the codes on the panel to do the uh, boot up. Let's see if there's a uh, I think all these are Looking at the function data on the control panel, the B, M, here on the function data display. And we have 01DM. Go to step 3.g on page 43. 3. G. Press the power push button that's located on the AS400 control panel. Getting a little bit of uh, lights. It's going to turn into the codes. So something's happening. So there's an activity that's going on. Just saying that there's no activity for more than 10 minutes uh, to uh, proceed to further troubleshooting. So I think it's just the process is going to. The processor light, the first processor light is going. Of course, I'm not in the setup screen or anything like that on the terminal. And my system console is at the zero slash zero address. I 
The cursor position has moved to the upper left now. So I think the system is still in the you know, process of moving. So we we'll give it a little bit of a chance to Can you, I, I have uh, my mic is, is showing up on the sound bar. Sound is low. Well, I have it set so I don't clip too much. Okay, it's a little bit low. Okay, I can crank that up, and that's so I'm occasionally in the, um, the yellows. And as long as I don't enter into the red, I do have the noise canceling dropping in and out here. And these, this headset's real sensitive. Um, and it's a, it's a wireless headset, so I may have just been speaking low or... Um, as long as I don't mute entirely, if I lean my head sometimes where the microphone tilts in a particular way, um, it goes through and mutes, and it'll tell me so. Or I can just go through and raise the boom. Huh. Okay, it didn't. Eat, it didn't tell me that the uh, that the microphone is muted. I wonder if I'm picking up, getting picked up from another microphone source um, on the PC, most likely. And that happens sometimes when. Um, okay. So let me. I just want to make sure that I'm in. And I don't know how the cooler noise is either, because
okay. Yeah, and I'll have to tune down again. Well, I think I can leave my sound up that way. You mean the headset mic, right? Yeah, I have it. It's sourcing from another um, microphone because I have my boom up now and it's still doing sound levels. So, um, okay, I think that that is going to be much better. That's from the headset. And then I have to go back down on my levels again now. Um, because, yeah, it's just, um, but how about now? And nice to see you, Russ. <laughs> my, my audio levels should be from the headset now. Okay, and it tells me when I'm muted or not now. And look what we have on the screen. <laughs> yeah, look, and we finally have a login. Now, this display is actually capable of a lot higher resolution, native resolution. And so it's a little bit... convoluted here. Um, I wonder and I'm going through and uh, and I'm logging in as the um, Q security officer. And that is the, uh, basically the high level account. Okay, actually enter. Why is my okay? Okay, previous sign on. Okay, so my last sign in. I don't know if this is right for all that. It says the May the fifth of nineteen or um, May the fifth of. 2022. So it's been more than a year and a half. That's probably actually right. I thought I had this going. Um, I thought I had this going uh, this year sometime. Okay. Now, but I'm, I'm into the system. And um, so the, and of course I pro I'll probably forgot the, um, the shutdown sequence. Let's see if I've got F9 for command prompt. No, if I do, let's do change user PRF. 
Helps if I get the inner right. Okay. Q sec. Well, far. Okay. And I do need to go through and to um, at some point I need to go through and look to see what other accounts are on here. But um, yeah, I've I've at least got it to to boot up. I'm tempted in a way to um yeah i hate to go through and switch streams i wish I could go through on my VGA with a little bit more work and have it duplicate the display as well as to the clear click. But let's see. And even the, um, this, the uh, 16, 16 by 9 display is probably pretty good even on that. Let's do this. Let me get up on the internal webcam again. But um, see, that's why I have the 3488s and 3489 terminals, because you can capture VGA input from those devices. So I can go through and I can get it onto my through my clear click unit and my clear click unit would go through and work. Um, I can, I can go through and have a, an instance like this besides um, all the, the uh, vintage computers, the PS twos and things like that, that I, um, that I um, have all my PS twos. I have set up to even like the mall 25s with the CRTs built in. I have a mechanism to go through and to get to get video out of those systems onto where I can capture it on the clear click. And in the case of the Mall 25, in addition to what I have on the screen. So also for the AS400 terminals, I have this to go through and to get uh, to be able to capture that VGA output as well, rather than having my camcorder go through and have to be focused in on some screen to to be able to um, to see things. So um, I I think that that is a um, that's a nice. Um, thing for uh, a completion for this this uh, live stream is to at least have where I'm able to do the content related to the uh, to the video stream um, up and and display it and things like that to get my as 400 going again looks like it started up correctly I'll I'll probably go through the process I may even want to go through and leave it on or I'll go through and set up that that um, that cable, but um, let's go through and I haven't seen oh and and um, thank you for the congratulations from Brazil. Just going through and. Um, uh reading through some of the comments now um it's interesting that and i was hoping to see uh some of the um people from spain as well for the mainframe group and mini computer they've been really doing s some good youtube videos uh lately as well 
but um, I bring that up because one of my 5494 units, and that's a um, that's an AS400 uh, remote controller, means that if you had a site office, you had a 5494, and you had twin X terminals connected through it, you had a link like a modem or a T1 line or uh, there's a, a wide variety of ways of doing those links back to the to the main office. And you could have that 5494 locally, too, just to add more terminals and things like that to your system. Um, but I bring up the 5494 because there were two units I have. I've shown those on the uh, there's videos on the, my channel of those. And one was made in Brazil and one was made in Spain. Those are the two manufacturing locations. So that's how I'm bringing in uh, the thought of Brazil and Spain into this. So let's go through, even though we have a real nice screen up from the 3489, I want to do... I wanted to go through and meter out that um, that UPS cable as well, but and there's so many varieties of the AS400, and um, of course at my workplace running the uh, the Power 720 is uh, and even the support is running out on 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 that unit. That's why we're having to go through and do a migration from it. But, um, um, and that's uh, kind of a modern, looks like a uh, a tower server with, um, there's images online of the Power 720 uh, that just looks like a big uh, Netfinity server or something like that, black as these, um, 9406 170s are and uh, the others in the series of that of the i series are black but then there's earlier beige models i need to start getting those out and going through and working with those too so let me go through i want to go through and let's get off the internal webcam, but that makes for a good thumbnail right there, doesn't it? The main menu. Okay, we're gonna switch back over to the camcorder output. That's why I like my little clear click because it has the remote that I can switch between the HDMI, which is my camcorder and the VGA. Later on, I'll go through and have all the component and composite video that I can do as well. There's even S video, you know, that I can put through and capture or even display on this, not an IBM monitor in the back. So let's go through. Let's get, and I'll, like I say, I need to get that, that uh, VGA that way that I'm going to go through and duplicate locally. So I can do both the clear click and the, uh, the monitor behind here as, as options. But I want to go through this point and Okay, and let's get out each of these cables in turn. These are still bagged. And this is the trip light um, cables. I gave the link on a post that I did on the, uh, if you want to see how to use these, you'll have to join the, uh, the mainframe and me computer group on Facebook. Because I gave a post on how you time in and then the commands that you run. And I could probably leave the uh, tie wraps on for going through. 
and uh, checking continuity on these things. And it's going to be really hard with my noise canceling headphones to hear that faint beep as I go through. Now I have to remember my DE9. You know, these are not DB9, these are DE9. Or I don't know when the, what they call the when the pins um missing, you know, what they call that a DE8. Because it's eight pins. Well, I think that's and the shell size, it's uh it's an E shell size. So I'm going to go. And you'd almost expect like a, uh, you know, like a null modem cable, very similar. Or some kind of loop back structure. If this goes through like an, an impedance transformer or something else, it'd be okay. So I had, and I'll have to go through a chart, write down a chart of these because I get continuity there. Ah, yeah, it's going to be impossible to show. Go up to my leg I have I can't even show what pins I'm on for this view but I'll get a chart going of these I mean the first thing I should do is go through and check for loop back at one end and that's how it knows that the, the cable's connected, at least. Um, but I think that these, uh, the two cables that I have are going to be uh, the same pinout. I think, I believe they'll probably be marked the same way. And they, they do have the same pins. I'm going to find that. I'll find that post. Uh, yeah, let's get to. And if people were on that group, I could even link where the. I mean, I could do it from my from my Facebook page too, but it adds a lot of. Uh, I'd have to be a lot of uh, sanitizing uh, to go through that process. And this is actually um, a couple months back, so it even may take uh, a bit for me to, maybe I'm better searching through. Because it had a, I could give the link to the page. Okay. Now the nice little pictures. Let me see. Okay. Now let's look on Amazon. Yeah, it's still listed as out of stock. I was going to say, if there's other people that uh, were looking for this cable, but once I have the pin out, it'll be to where you can make your own if you happen to have a, another I-series of your own. Yeah, and that was intended to be my uh, question since I, I'm talking about the 
the mainframe and mid, uh, mini computer or mid range. What's the difference between a mainframe and a mini computer from IBM? What's the definition that uh, that separates those and defines what a mainframe is to what a mini computer process? A uh, uh, mini computer being a uh, an AS four hundred where it is able to have terminals connected to it, or System 36, System 34, were also mini computers. They call them mini computers. System 34 is huge. Uh, system 36s are still pretty good sized, um, probably about the size of a lot of the AS400s. But um, the, um, the quick answer to that is price the mini computer is priced lower than a mainframe computer and i'm sure that there's uh nuances of of how the processor and other things are but uh that's the main definition is it's a matter of price um between the systems, many computers being a lower price. Um, so I gave the link to the Amazon page. This, okay. This is actually and great information. In fact, I uh, it needs to be effectively captured. Um, oh, and this even goes through. Okay, after the UPS cable is attached, a deep server IPL is required to detect the presence of the cable. And they're even talking about removing power from the AS400. I don't know if they're talking about where... Uh, Uh, ultimately, uh, that would be crashing it. Here's the IBM page. It talks about that. Um, now, oh, that has uh, that was offered by someone else of. Uh, by Ertzi in Spain. Uh, he was talking about making your own cables. This is the other one that I wanted to provide as a link, because this is from APC itself. And I want to look through that manual too, because I got to scan I want to scan for um, just to have that PDF up of the because I think the this booklet has a lot of details as well and this is still shrink wrapped going through and um, I'm not opening for the warranty registration. I'll go through and ultimately opening it up for for scanning. Okay. So there's some trip light. And the 
installation, a quick test. Okay. And so I'm going to go through. Not to follow through, it's probably going to take a little bit of um, reading carefully through the instructions for both this and what I linked on the, for the AP, that APC link as well. We're going through and uh, getting it set up. Uh, there's the IBM page. Okay, I'm not interested in filling out any survey. Okay. 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 And of course, um, it'd be interesting to, to go through a process of once the cable's connected to uh, pull power to the UPS and let it go on battery power and uh, let it go through and shut down the system too. Okay, I'm just looking through the IBM document a little bit. Disruptive. Okay. As noted in the IBM software technical document 46739013, most users may be using D slash A slash D and SST within the IBM OS to determine if a UPS is detected by the IBM server. Wow. Um, So, no UPS is detected. Okay. Oh, okay. So there's even a link on the APC page of a PDF. of uh, looks like the installation. Files.pdf. Okay. Okay. Even that PDF is not so large. And at least the the keyed connection on the AS four hundred side makes it so you don't get the the cable swapped around. So okay, but yeah, I'll have to go through and read how to connect up one of those cables, and then go through and. Um, also, continuity check both of them, make sure that they're identical because they look identical otherwise. And so that is going to be part of the process I have to do. Uh, for the delays, I've 
been live for about an hour. I was even really hoping to get. Okay. So. Yeah, that's a good definition of mainframe in chat. Um. Yes. Yep. To where it's the service is interrupted for um or not interrupted for uh the support that IBM gave or um to be as as uh, less disruptive as possible in the case of um of, of component failure. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in getting that cable connected. I don't want to go through and um, and uh, crash the AS400 or anything like that to go through and install this cable. Oh, they even have appropriate communication cable for your smart online UPS system. And they talk about the uh, 1,000 VA, the 3,000 VA, and then the um, 5,000 plus VA. And I have uh, just a smart UPS, um, I think it's a 1,000 unit, maybe a 1,500. Yeah, it's a 1,000. It's a thousand VA. Okay. If you're connecting the cable to a server equipped with a nine pin J14 port, such as an AS400 MAL 170 or I series MAL 270, there's no need to power down the server before installation. Hmm. Okay, if you're connecting the cable to the server equipped with a T1 or T2 port, such as an IBM system I5 model 520, you must shut down the server and completely remove all power cords for five minutes immediately prior to the installation. After five minutes have elapsed, attach the appropriate power cable, the appropriate cable and restart the server. This allows the server to configure the T1 or T2 port as a UPS monitoring port. Installation of the T1 or T2 port also requires the use of an IBM adapter cable, and then they give the, the uh, option FC1827. And as I say, I'll, I'll have this um, booklet scanned as well, uh, and I can put that up online. Um, okay, but this is going to be a little bit of a process that I have to think, have to go through and, and um, uh, carefully uh, follow the steps. Yeah. So I do want to thank everybody for tuning in. I, um, um, at least I was able to drift into the appropriate topic here of getting my AS400 up and running again, powered on. And um, maybe it'll be cool enough in here. It's good to see it operating again, especially for the point of being off for a year and a half. I didn't realize it was that long. And I've been working with, uh, been operating the one at, at work, but uh, this is a little bit more uh, earlier model that I've got to, uh, to go through and figure out a little bit better. So I will go through and um, see if I can figure out the process of this. At least they're telling me it doesn't have to be powered down and there's steps to go through to 
make sure that see I what oh sorry sorry for yawning um I have to see how they're doing this display search. I'm looking at the APC page. And how to get into that display storage lo location and um, to follow the, to the sequence of what numbers are displayed for the UPS cable being disconnected, so on and so forth. Um, but I will go through and do that. So I do appreciate everybody tuning in. And um, I do have another scheduled live stream for tomorrow. And that is um, so 14, less than 14 hours from now. And I'll go through and I'll leave the system up as I've got everything kind of working a little bit. And there's some material there that it's not really conducive to a live stream. But um, I'm hoping to, to start the discussion and hope it goes viral as well for the, uh, the discussion of all the uh, fraud that's occurring on the, the vintage computer groups in particular. Uh, because it's getting this uh, omnipresent thing uh, on those groups and it's interfering with a lot of uh, transactions otherwise that um, that people should be able to do transactions a little bit more without this uh, this nutty behavior of these scammers going coming in through there and and uh, trying to disturb things. Um, so we'll go through from. From there, I mean, there's a lot of fraud that's happening on Facebook. And that's part of the larger discussion that we need on have on Facebook of um, what they're going to do to clean up a the, the platform a little bit more because it's uh, it's just absolutely hard to interact with the human. Now they let the, uh, the AI run it and um, the stuff that needs these accounts out there that are fraudulent need to be need to be closed down, need to be purged from the system so we can uh, so we can have a better Facebook. But we'll see if that uh, goes through and takes place. I, I hope it would. So um, thanks for everybody for tuning in. I'm going to go back over to the uh, just to look at the chat a little bit. That's why I like the boom of this uh, headset as I just raise it. So if I have to cough or something. Um, but uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in. If you've not subscribed to the channel, please do. And um, I, you know, I hope my subscriber base will, will go up. It looks like I'm, I'm getting right about uh, 1,800 subscribers. Pretty close to that. And I know that there's other things happening uh, right this weekend of the uh, VCF Midwest. I wish I could have been there just like we went to uh, VCF Southwest. And um, but I'll just have to live vicariously through other videos of some of the friends that are there and enjoying, I'm sure, that um, on the mainframe side, even there's one person that posted that they were um, They've got a uh, 6400 series line printer that they're taking to to uh, VCF Midwest and looking at uh, selling, trading it, whatever. And uh, so I have to see if uh, somebody wants to pick up a 6400 series printer. I don't know what options it has. We still have a 6400 series printer in, uh, in service for my uh, workplace. And it actually prints the water bills for the city. So um, 
yeah, I understand. Uh, I could run OBS and a lot of time on the streaming, I, I go through and just, I start up OBS and just as long as it has a visible indication of the uh, audio levels uh, and what's showing on the screen, uh, I rely on that. So uh, I, I should have said I picked up this headset more for the Zoom meetings and other uh, training that there were hundreds of people going through the Zoom meeting and a lot of time they were muting the person or you go through and you mute yourself, but it's an easy way out for me to know that my boom is up. And she tells me on the, on the headset that, that I'm muted. That's an easy way to go through and ensure that I'm muted, um, with my boom up otherwise, and just lower the boom when I need to talk. So uh, that was the situation a little bit more to where, um, Yeah, and they even told me there, I must have tilted my head in the wrong way or she heard me talking. Maybe that's... Uh... Okay, mic unmuted. And so, um, yeah, it's a good indicator. Okay, so and I don't know if you can see the the red light when it mutes as well. Um, I think it's the battery charge that's going through. Um, I'm this thing typically lasts for several hours. I'm not sure why it's going through a uh, uh, muting and unmuting uh, rapidly here, but. Um, uh, it's working for the moment, but that is as good a place that, uh, to take the cue to say, I, I, you know, happy for everybody that tuned into the stream. I'm going to go through and uh, close down the stream. Be sure to join me tomorrow for what we can go through and do some discussion on and appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, this is IBM Museum. That's all I have for now. Thank you.